Welcome everyone to a brand new episode here on Dynamic Conversations. In this Dynamic Conversation, I have the pleasure to welcome a friend all the way from Indonesia, Bali, Cashfee Reynolds. For three years, Cashfee has been the community and event manager of the very popular co-working place Hubuts in Ubud, which is in Bali. And that's also, in fact, where we met. I've been going to Bali, uh, you know, in the last few years, uh, on and off. And now, sadly enough, because of Corona, they had to close doors. And since then, Cashfee has been um, working as the community manager for the company Slash, which is a company that builds remote autonomous teams to help innovators develop software, products, and high-tech startups. Over the years, Cashfee has organized more than 700 events and workshops for remote workers and entrepreneurs. If you ever want someone to organize an event or workshop for you, this is your guy. Also, if you want someone to run a community, Cashfee is amazing at it. Some of the things that we talk about in this dynamic conversation are traveling, uh, our top three recommendations of things to do or see in Bali, community, growth, mindsets, and a whole lot more of topics. If you would like to check out Cashfee and follow him on social media, then check out the show notes, which you can find in the description of this episode. There as well, you can find any other resources or anything that we mentioned in the conversation. With that, I hope you will enjoy this dynamic conversation with Cashfee Reynolds and me. All right, I, I actually maybe this is maybe something that you've talked maybe a lot about, I don't know, or mm -hmm. had a lot of people ask you, but mm -hmm. uh, let me just start with this one. So mm -hmm. I've been to Bali like a few times now uh, mm -hmm. and been there f for some months. So I've mm -hmm. so I've explored a little bit of it and have mm -hmm. some of my favorite places. Uh, but I was also curious because I want to share the top three or sort of things that I thought about that I think that I could recommend to people mm -hmm. if they go to Bali. And mm -hmm. I want to ask like your top three of things that you could recommend to anyone listening uh, who wants to go to Bali too. And this could be like an activity or a restaurant or just a place. Mm -hmm. okay. um, and I can actually also open Google Maps and we can also show this. Okay. So let me just open Google, go to Bali. And maybe we also discover something new ourselves to go and uh, check out next time when we're there. Yes, sure. I, I can share. Well, I, it's it's like I'm here. I can actually check it out, but I'm curious. You can already that. go and check it out, yes. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> and these are, of course, just three things that I thought about. Like, oh, yeah, these were fun things to experience when I was in Bali. There's so many, mm -hmm. of course, but, you know. Uh, so let me share my screen. And you can see this. Yes. Yeah, so ignore everything. You know, there's so many things that I've put on there um so let me share one and then if you think of something that you could recommend that you can share and then mm -hmm. let me share another one so you know first thing that i actually wanted that i could recommend and maybe you've already been there it's not mm -hmm. exactly bali but it's new sapanita mm -hmm. last time when i was in bali uh i went for the first time to it and it was such a cool island just mm -hmm. getting a scooter and actually going to the to the east. Have okay. you been there? Actually, I never been there. Oh man, like I mean, uh, the the east is <laughs> the roads are so crazy. Oh my god, I can imagine. <laughs> I heard stories. Oh man. my god, but it's such an adventurous island. It's uh -huh. so awesome. Uh, and yeah, like it's not, su I mean, okay, I was there when Corona was happening, so it was super quiet, no tourism, but mm -hmm. I don't know. I don't know in general, I think it's not so touristic like Bali, I think. Mm -hmm. Uh, but the East is amazing. It's uh, just so wild, so mm -hmm. many beautiful, I mean, yeah, you have the ocean everywhere just to look at and, and the roads are just so fun. <laughs> 
I would say mm -hmm. that you need some driving skills on your scooter because it gets really wild, the roads. Like, they're really broken. But if you can manage, ah, oh, so cool to go there. Yeah. You know, like, one, one thing that I know about... Um, one thing that I know about Nusa Panida and mm -hmm. the reason why I don't really want to go there... A reason why you don't like, want to go there? No, wait. It's not like I don't want to go there. Uh -huh. But it's just... Uh, it's one of the... Um, that's where the uh, black magic came from. It's one of the, you know, there's a lot of people coming to Bali, uh, yeah. coming to there to do. I don't know exactly, but it's very. Let me let me find it in English words because <laughs> I don't know what is. But uh, I heard a lot. Of, uh, uh, I heard a lot of um, like scary story from my friends. At least one of my friends just shared a story uh that uh when he was visiting that island somehow uh he's staying at this hotel and then um there's not a lot of people who who are like living in that hotel because it's still pretty new i don't know if the if the people already praying uh -huh. to uh you know because when you're opening up a new place in bali you're or you know because most of the people there are like hindu you need mm. to make a blessing for the whole uh, area of the new um, of the new building, right? Mm -hmm. Like, um, so I don't know if they already done it or not. But at that time, he was staying there. I guess he's also the only people who are living there, if I'm not mistaken. But there was this one night when he was staying there first time. During that night, he was with his friend, um, and all of a sudden, he got a like ghost story. Mm -hmm. and then like a nightmare um, like an yeah a nightmare and then somehow the people next to him he started to scream mm. like for for a long time and you know calling him calling his name as well like hey, I, I i i don't really want to say the name but <laughs> this the friends are started to you know i don't know all of a sudden uh my friend had that dream about this person uh -huh. And then this person started to call his name until he wake up because his friend was screaming his name so loud. Uh -huh. And then he was so scary. Um, and he started to call the receptionist, which uh, which is very tricky as well. He needs to do it like two times. Um, not a lot. Uh, they, they're not pretty much on the receptionist. And then uh, he asked, like, okay, have you have you done the blessing in this place? Yeah, this is very new. And then, and then somehow the, the news got into the whole area there. And then um, I guess the next day after they started to do, like, the blessing again for that building. So I don't know if they've done it before, but after that situation happens, mm -hmm. um, they decided to do the, another blessing for the building. Um, because Panida Island, that's... Uh, the reason why I say it about black magic right there is the place for people if they want to do it, I guess. But I, in New Savanida? In New Savanida, but I'm not sure. It's very uh, sacred, like sacred place. Uh -huh. uh, one of the sacred place. Ah, that's the that's the word. One uh, of the sacred secret, places here in okay. Bali. Um, um, I mean, yeah. I had a great time, to be honest. Yeah, that's good for you, man. I, <laughs> but I, I just don't want to. Didn't have any crazy nightmares, but yeah, I I could recommend it. You know, <laughs> I, I I mean, if I, I I would recommend it as well because they have like very nice beach. the The view is amazing. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. It's pretty much untouched compared to any other place in Bali, right? It's I can crazy. see from yeah. the picture. Um, yeah, the one that, yeah, the one that you were just putting it's, there. It's also great for for diving for anyone or diving who, who mm -hmm. dives uh yeah. I did some diving there it was super beautiful yeah it's it's great it's i mean yeah <laughs> yeah i believe um yeah do you have anything that you think of right now that when you you know like it could, again restaurants an activity mm -hmm. or just something beautiful you know some sightseeing or something that mm -hmm. you've seen in bali i guess for me, one of my favorite places that I ever visited in Bali is uh, waterfall. I love waterfall so much. You love waterfalls. Um, yeah, I. Yeah. You know, like in the in the because coming from Jakarta, 
uh-huh. I didn't really see a lot of like nature. And then right. at that time, when I first time moved to Bali, I, I somehow see a lot of nature. So I was like, oh my God, this is so beautiful. And um, of course, I tried to find a spot to where to go. And somehow in Ubud, since I based there before, there are a lot of like waterfalls around Ubud, right? And yes. I just decided to go to a couple of them. Mm-hmm. But one of my favorite, uh, one of my favorite waterfall, it's called Kanto Lampo. Is it in Ubud? Um, actually, no, because it's a little bit to the north. But it's ah. one. It's a- it's one I of going, the big. Am I going the right way here? Um, I guess a little bit more up. Kachipung waterfall is also good. That's my first waterfall that I went to. Can you help the, me type it? Uh, K-A K-A N-T-O Quantu K-A N N K-A M N-T-O Not N, but N like N. no. <laughs> okay. T-O T-O uh, Space L-A L a. Yes, that one, the first one. This one. Yes. Man. Have I been so here? Big. Have you been there? I don't know. I've been here, I think. Let's see. Ah, yeah, yeah. I have been here, actually. Yeah, it's so... I don't know. For me, it's just so dreamy. And it's... I don't... I, I just like the way it goes because... Some waterfall, you need to go down very far, and here it's not. Mm. You don't really have to walk down that much, yes. and it's very chill. They also have a lake, so then you can actually swim there. I've um, been here, but the waterfall itself is just so beautiful. For me, it's just so amazing. I, yeah, let's... I, I never I, before I coming and decided to move to Bali. Mm-hmm. I, I never been anywhere because mm. I never really travel that much. Right. And uh, even though that I've been to Bali for a couple of times before I decided to move to Bali, mm-hmm. I never been to Ubud area. I always just go to like Seminyak or like Changu. So when I decided to move to Ubud, I just surrounded by nature, right? Yeah. <laughs> because it's Ubud just is all a over you. It's a jungle. Yeah. So I was like very fascinating with with how waterfall that's my i guess that's my first waterfall that i ever visited and then afterwards i just decided to visit more and more really? waterfall because i love it um i remember yeah. it was a little bit difficult to find it or something um or was it's it a just bit tr- maybe me who was i guess it's a bit tricky um but but okay it's but yeah i mean you can you can actually like when because I don't think that the maps really say where it is. Yeah. Um, but when you're close there, you just need to ask the locals and then exactly. they pretty much will tell you like, oh, okay, just go there. Yeah. You know how nice Bali people are. Pretty, pretty nice, sis. <laughs> oh, yeah. I love, I love Balinese people. They're yeah, they're nice. awesome. I know. Um, but that's my favorite one. I had also another one called... Uh, it's called the Water Palace, but there's a couple of ones. Uh, I think this one is Taman Tir Tirta Ganga. Tirta Ganga. Okay. Wait, I've never been there. Taman, is it this one? Yes. Yes. How how do you say this? Taman Tirta Ganga. Uh, uh, Taman Tirta Ganga. <laughs> All right, uh, I'm not gonna repeat. Oh my God! That. See. My Indonesian is getting there. <laughs> it's, it's out right now, then. Uh, if you've not been there, it's it's never... also super beautiful and always like the photos on Google. I think don't do like the justice of like. Rejected. Yeah. Um, what, what what can you do there actually? Well, it's I, I think it was like a royal water palace or something. It's just mm-hmm. you can go and walk around. There's like fountains and and water everywhere, mm-hmm. and you can also go and swim in in the water Mm -hmm. uh and then there's like a restaurant but it's just like very pretty very much Mm -hmm. in nature and not super touristy because it's also so far so far (laughs) yeah yeah it's like it's up into the definitely into the east of bali Mm. but could also recommend it i i think i was here 
to, to dive and then I was just like, what's more like of, you know, nice things to see here. And oh. then I found this one and yeah, it's great. It's... It looks like it's very close to Ahmed there. Yeah. yeah. The, the dive spot. The dive spot? The diving spot in Ahmed, do you know? Yes, 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 yeah. Um, yeah, that's where okay. I actually went. Uh, so it's great. Also, if you've not been there, you can check you know, check it out. Mm. Okay. You have, anything, you have anything more that you think of? Uh, of course. <laughs> one of my favorite one is Manjangan Island. Ooh, I've never heard of that, actually, uh, I think. Is that really? In, is that here it, in the... Where it's, it's, no, Man, it's on the. Like, how do you? How do you also, M, 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 E, E, M, E, N, or J, M, E, N, G, J, yeah, M, E. So, <laughs> oh my God, cast me with spelling. Um, okay, M, E, E. Am I spelling it wrong? N. N. J. M A N J A N G A N. Is it this here? Okay. okay. Let me let me let me type it on the chat. I guess it's easier. Yeah. Is it okay? Of course. <laughs> I'm not always so great with uh uh, yeah, I'm also not great on like doing the spelling. Ah, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. That's, that's handy. Yeah. That's, ooh, yeah. what the hell is this? Whoa, yeah, that's, not, that's, that's very so far. far. It's, <laughs> oh, it's, wow. it's almost close to Java Island, actually. Wow. But we, we, I went there one time with uh, Hubut members. So we do an excursion there together. So yeah. this is actually a very excluded island. Um, there's no, there's no, there's no hotel or anything. It's just an island full of deer. Um, wow. So you oh, cannot yeah. even like really staying there. What? Full um, of deer? You, yeah. Deer. See? Yeah. Uh, because Manjangan itself, it's a, I guess it's a Balinese <laughs> word, uh, for a deer. So there's a lot of deer there. And then you can see like deer playing in the water um it is one of the most beautiful uh places that i've been to here in bali um the water is so clear um and wow. actually you can there's a lot of like um snorkeling spot uh, um, yeah it seems like that yeah snorkeling i don't know i'm not sure if you can do dive but i guess you can i don't really have a d diving <laughs> experience or license so i don't really know about uh -huh. it but i do snorkeling there one time yes, actually okay. there's that there's the one thing uh there's one thing happening when i was there i mean <laughs> did a deer bite very, you no the, it's very traumatizing okay um that that makes me care of uh an open water because it's just so big man somehow uh -huh. that's one of the uh, the the most beautiful coral. You can see a lot of corals and a lot of like fish that you never see before. At least for me. And yeah. I don't die. And um, one time I was it, it, so with the tour that I went to. Mm -hmm. There's like they they took you to like three different uh, snorkeling spots. And then on the first snorkeling spot, I was like, ah, oh, okay. You know, let's let's just go and see what's underwater because the water is so clear, it's so nice. I can't even see the fish like from the boat. So I was like, okay, let me just jump in. And then Kashfi was jumping in. And then when I started to jump in, it was really nice for the first five minutes, right? It's so beautiful. But somehow, because it's so big, and you I, I can see so what I see there is basically like a coral, like yeah. a uh, a mountain of coral here so when i was diving on the right side uh, on the left side it was a coral and then on the left side it was an open water ah. like it's so dark yes you cannot really even see anything there 
and my anxiety coming in because of course Kashi is scared of shark or you know I don't know what happens mm. in there there's a lot of uncertainty there for Kashi yeah, yeah, yeah. so I was getting nervous and then somehow it's just okay whatever let me just focus on the fish you know and I I started to see a lot of fish like it's so cute okay and then when I see up I was seeing this alligator fish so big like I I like it's like two three meters and the, like the mouth in was front of you right in front of me so what? I was so scared and I just decided to like no okay I I just want to go back to the boat and then right <laughs> afterwards I don't go to another another snorkeling spot because for me it, it was too much I was I was expecting like small fish and you know like cute little one oh but coral, it didn't do or, anything right I don't know what it will do to me but <laughs> the anxiety kicked <laughs> in so I was like okay let me just go back and uh, I guess I'm not I'm not um yeah I, I I just don't like the idea of like open water underwater it can be pretty scary actually yes especially right? like I do have a certificates and for yeah like you do a, diving yeah for like advanced you have to do like a night dive uh-huh. which is I mean you don't see anything right like you have a like a flashlight but it's definitely the first time it's super scary because what is what it's empty uh-huh. like you don't see anything in front of you it's so yeah <laughs> it's so still, weird it's so calm it's uh, yeah, and still a lot of people who do a lot of diving don't really, most of them don't enjoy, some some love it, but a lot just find it a little bit too scary to do like a night dive, because uh, it's just complete blackness around you. Uh, yeah. Although, the one thing that's cool, it's like the closest to experiencing like being in space in a way, because it's like mm-hmm. quiet, you don't see anything, you're without gravity. That's in another, that's kind of cool though, that. Like, uh, mm. but I get what you mean, though, that, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. What Ocean is, the weirdest, is a big place. I know. What is your weirdest creature that you ever see underwater, Elise? Ooh, there's a lot of weird ones. Uh, I think... Like, scary. Scary? Uh, I actually... Oh, well, there's, like, the really poisonous ones, like the scorpion fish. You don't really notice it too much. Because it's like very hidden. A Let scorpion me. Fish. A scorpion. Oh, that's just fish. Um. Yeah. Oh, so that one. But they look. Okay, this one you can see pretty well. But they're 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 like rocks, so you don't see them. Oh. And sometimes when I was diving, uh, because you always have like a dive master or, or instructor mm. guiding you uh mm. they were like pointing at it because it's pretty awesome to see it you don't see it so mm. much but if mm-hmm. you touch it it's so poisonous that yeah you should never touch it yeah, it's very it, it's very tricky uh, because they they kind of like camouflage as a yes as a, as a rock as well yeah and you also have wow. stone fish that's also very poisonous and you almost don't see, you know, it that it's a fish. But it's so bizarre just that fish can do that, you yeah. know? Like, they can completely adjust to the surrounding and, uh, yeah, it just looks like a stone. <laughs> this type of creature is the reason why I don't want to <laughs> Yeah, let me yeah. just having my life. I'm on the boat, seeing everything like from there. I don't know. I I I, I just not a big fan anymore after that situation. Got it. It's got very traumatizing. <laughs> yeah. Um. All right, but that's a really awesome suggestion. Actually, that when I'm next in next time in Bali, because this, I mean, how how long does it take to drive there from from Ubud? From from Ubud, it took around like three to four hours, uh, by car. I would recommend to oh, just go by car though, because uh, if you're going with a bike, it can be very tiring. I guess. So. Um, yeah. And yeah, I, w- I was there. I was going there with a car, and it's already even tiring for me to go that far, knowing that you know when you're living in Ubud, everything is just very yeah. close, and then you don't really get used to like long drive, and then 
going there for four hours, man, that's wild. too much. <laughs> Uh, you take a boat in, I guess. Yeah. So so basically, you uh, you can stay. Um, so there's a like small little isle like on the shore, like Mm. around that national park. Somewhere here. Yeah. No, no, no. On the national park. I hear. Yeah, menjangan there, plat plataran. So you basically stay there around plataran. Uh, if you go to the right, not the rest of the national park, there, this yeah, one? that that area, mm. uh, plataran around that area. Ah, yeah, yeah, so you're you just like you can uh, see some... there. Wow. And then there's a lot of uh, like what? Uh, hotel restaurants, but it's very, it's very local. The ocean I club. Might say. <laughs> God damn. All right. Yes. But, but yeah, it's one of one of the best uh, places that I ever visited because the the water is so clear and it's just so nice to see a deer in the water. You know, like <laughs> the deer in the water. <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty unusual, at least for cash. Yes, but I was never expecting some deer somewhere in Bali, to be honest. So that's that's oh really super bizarre. Yes, yes. I don't know. For some reason, I just think of monkeys and that's it. Mm. Uh, yeah, I mean, like uh, so. Yeah, but did they come like the same with like um, the Gili Islands with the horses? Did they happen to be there? Like, did humans put them there, or, or do you know anything uh, about that? I I actually don't know, but the reason why the name of uh, the island itself is Menjana. Oh, yeah, it's called to deer, right? Mm. It, it, it's the deer itself. I don't really know about. So the maybe history. they were there already. Yeah, so that's why they call it Menjana Island. <laughs> Probably. Yeah. Okay. Probably, Interesting. Yeah. Awesome suggestion. Very, very recommended. Uh, so a last one that I actually have is uh, more of an activity. Mm-hmm. And it's one that I did last time that I that I loved so much that I did it like over three or four times. Uh, but it's mm-hmm. actually to go and do uh, dirt biking. Oh. So I had Bali dirt bikes. That was the company Bali Dirt Bike, uh-huh. but I well that's not here. Um, but I couldn't find them on on Google Maps anymore. So I don't know with Corona that they maybe mm. I guess, don't exist uh, anymore. Yeah, actually, but, like when mm-hmm. yeah, it was somewhere over here that we went to, and it was like different tracks. Like one was next to the volcano here. Mm. Uh, another one was just next to the beach and then another track was uh, in a jungle and I don't know it was so much fun I guess there are still like a couple of places who uh, I mean like a couple of uh, travel agency still just... offering this uh, activity ah, yeah. but actually after, after the corona there are a lot of um, like this kind of activity started to like fell off. I think it's actually this one that I went with. Bali dirt bikes. Bali dirt bikes. Okay. Uh, ah, yeah, it's exactly this one. Yes, it's great. I uh, I loved it so much. It's it's. I mean, definitely not for everyone, right? Because it's a bit more, I guess, adventurous of an activity. Adventurous. I was about to say. <laughs> But it's it's something completely different, you know. If you want to do something completely different in Bali, uh, you can do this. You can do this, and mm. uh, it's a great thing. To, uh, yeah, it's a lot of fun. And the people there, I mean, the guides, the uh, like, you know, the instructors or so, like, they were very. I mean, everyone like yeah, in Bali is super friendly. They were very friendly mm. guys, and uh, so they can even. I mean, for any level, if you're a beginner or or totally or never did it, they will kind of help you through it and. Uh, Yes, anyone can kind of do it after a while. Yeah. Nice. Okay. Well, Kashfi is not very adventurous, yeah. So this kind of activities, <laughs> not really my thing. <laughs> well, yes. All right. But you know, maybe one day, Kash, like if you, uh, if you think like, let Girl. me, you know, do some more adventurous things in my life. Uh, <laughs> let me just do it. <laughs> this option is out there. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Oh, of course. We'll see. We'll see. <laughs> A last one. Do you have a last one of recommendations in Bali 
for people listening. I guess, for me. I guess, I guess, uh, another place that I like to visit, it's just a simple rice terrace, uh, terrace in uh-huh. the Galalang, you know, in Ubud. It's very, it's very close to the center as well. Um, it was very touristy actually in the beginning. Um, is it a specific rice? Um, where is it actually? Is it a bit um, more to the north? A little bit more to the north. So from Ubud, from the city center, it took around 30 minutes to go up there, to Galalang. Um, this one here. I guess that... No, 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 no. No? Oh, yeah, that one. Yes, that one. Ah, yeah. It's super beautiful, actually. It's yep. so beautiful. Especially when the when the rice is still, like, very green. Because sometimes when the uh, when the when they started to harvest the rice, mm-hmm. like it's sometimes like looking like that, like brown. <laughs> but when it's ah, like yeah. very like very blooming, it's really it's really beautiful. I love it. And you know, um, actually, in the beginning of my journey in Bali, uh, I tried to visit it, a lot of like touristy places as well mm. because I'd never been. So I went there, I just go, sometimes I go there by myself just because I want to be surrounded by nature and then listening to the music by myself. You know, when I, when I just need some time for myself, um, I'll go to nature to just reconnect. That's a great thing to do. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, it's super beautiful there. So, uh, I, I have been there, well, just once actually, but. Now that mm-hmm. I'm seeing it again, I should go there next time again too, because it's great. Yeah. Yeah, it's really good. I recommend it. <laughs> Me too. Yeah. Verified. <laughs> uh let me just stop this my sharing. Uh mm-hmm. stop share. There we go. Okay. So that was one of the first things that I kinda wanted to talk about. Uh there's two mm-hmm. very different ones after this but uh what was something that you wanted to talk about i guess one of one of the thing is around growth i just want to know your perspective what do you think growth is because um this is one thing that i've been thinking this past two weeks um and somehow when i think about it um uh, it makes me realize a lot of things uh, like on how I was before in Jakarta mm. and then uh, here I am in Bali. But um, I've been hearing these words for the past two weeks because I've been working in this uh, company, uh, this startup company. And then I Which work as a... Is it actually mm-hmm. if you... It's, uh, it's called Slash. Uh, yeah, it's okay. one, of, uh, mm-hmm. uh, one of the business uh, that is uh, organized by one of the Hubut member, actually. They found it really? first time in Cambodia, mm. and then they decided to expand their team here in Bali. And knowing that right now, well, they have a headquarter in Cambodia, mm-hmm. but right now they, uh, after the corona, uh, they started to make everyone to start remote uh, working. So they also looking Indonesia as an opportunity to find and grow the team. So here I am joining them. Nice. But uh, my role at that company uh, is actually working together with one of the executive to be part of the people operation team. Mm-hmm. And then as part of, uh, as part of my role, um, my role is basically around people and uh, people and culture. Mm-hmm. And then somehow uh, I had a discussion with my executive as well, um, how we want our team to grow together with us. But uh, because because that has been mentioned a lot of time, it makes me thinking as well, like what what is actually growth mm. in 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 the company perspective? Like if you if you see someone as an employer uh, in one of the company and that uh, company would like you to grow together with them. Okay. What do you have in mind actually as an employer? I, for because when I got that question to me, 
um, there's a lot of thinking coming up in my head. Uh, for me, growth is when I, when I, when I see like what what comes in my head in the beginning is basically around uh, the time when I did when I was in Jakarta and then I decided to move to Bali and then there's a lot of things happening to me and then I see a lot of like personal growth coming up to me as well but sure. what is a what is what is uh professional growth like mm. when it when it comes to growth itself I just I just want to know like your perspective actually Elise about that um, what what's growth for you but growth in the terms of a company mm-hmm Yes. Mm-hmm. So growth as an individual in a company. Yeah, in the company. I think it's almost the same as just uh, you know just personal growth, you know, uh, or mm-hmm. or at least how I would think how it happens. Uh, I, I mean, like in general, I would say growth happens when you do things that scare you, and mm-hmm. you start to become more confident in them. Mm-hmm. and yeah. i think i mean that's what yeah. i think personal growth is like you do something mm-hmm. all right that you're a bit scared of um and i mean and you can of course learn a bit about it to know how to kind of do it you know mm-hmm. uh but it's about doing it doing it again and again more and more becoming more confident in it and mm-hmm. that way you grow as a person and i think it's just the same in a company too actually you know, as an individual, mm-hmm. how to grow in a company uh, or together. Like you can do something together as a group that you are all new in. And with that, mm-hmm. maybe a little bit more uncertain about, so more scared mm-hmm. of, right? So, yeah. yeah, you can grow as a group in that way too, to do something together that you're not familiar with and, yeah, overcome it. And that way you grow as a person because you have to, use or work together mm. okay interesting for me i mean like for me it's also the same like when it, i guess personal growth and professional growth is pretty much the same uh, i agree on what you're saying as well before when you can do something that you're scared of before and then being comfortable afterwards that you've um, grown right because yeah at least i mean like at least my experience, what I have in mind when it comes to growth is uh, it's around, like it's around my personal growth itself. Like when I was, when I was in Jakarta before, mm-hmm. and then I'm, I'm so stuck there and then how I kind of like get out of my comfort zone and then decided to move to Bali fully. And then somehow That's scary. that experience, it changed. Yeah. It's scary, mm-hmm. but it changed my life so much in a lot of ways. Uh, uh, I could imagine, opening yeah. Opening up a, like a lot of like different uh, mindset and different uh, point of view. Um, but like when it comes to professional, um, I mean, I, I I never I I my first my first job it was Hubert, right? Yeah. Right after I finished my call uh, my uni. Uh-huh. And then I never had any like professional uh, experience that much because with Hubud, I was working with them for like three or three and a half years. Yeah. And that's the only company that I've worked before. I mean, if I, if I look up into growth from how, the three and a half years. How did you grow yeah. in the company? I mean, like uh, as a person, by also doing things that you were scared of, right? And then getting more confident yeah. at it. And now, you know, if you would still be working in Hubuts and another, I don't know, community manager would be entering the mm-hmm. building who has no experience. It's through all the experiences mm-hmm. that you've had and all the things that you had to face, uh, you know, the difficulties that, mm-hmm. you know, resulted in knowledge. Mm-hmm. And with knowledge also comes confidence. And yeah. Okay, yeah, that's, that's good. That's kind of what I directly mind. sort of think of, right? Maybe there's a better yeah. answer or a different one for other people, but right now that feels more to me like, I guess, yeah, how it's just the same, I think, how you grow mm. in a company as how you grow 
um, okay. outside of a company. Yeah, I mean, when you're saying that, it, it uh, uh, it's coming up into my mind now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Because sometimes people forget, you know, like you're just doing things and then you're like, ah, okay, is there? <laughs> and then uh, when you're saying that, it, yeah, it uh, it reminds me uh, of a situation, let's say, like coming here uh, yes. to a new co-working space, not become uh, not becoming a community manager anymore. Just uh, coming but coming as a member. As the member. <laughs> so I was like, <laughs> that's wow, different experience. And then somehow, of course, this co-working space is also have a community manager mm -hmm. and then somehow the community is very different and I guess so, yeah. uh and then there there's a lot of things coming up into my mind when when it comes like it um to you know like community building in this co-working space because this space is so big and there's a lot of things that you can do here mm -hmm. um but i guess when it comes to co-working space it also depends on what kind of co-working space are you, right? Like, yeah. are you a community-based co-working space or is it more like a startup where you have a couple of offices um, with different startups? But, but yeah. Uh, How is I, the community there? Non-existing or? <laughs> they, they just started actually. Like they just started. started like almost eight months in the beginning of this year eight yeah. months nine months so they still figuring out the best way how to make and bring people together yes so when i coming here they even started to uh opening up not opening up but gathering the new community of tech people here in uh -huh. changu um which is great uh because I didn't really see a lot of tech people, even though everyone is here. But the tech community, sorry, not the tech people, the tech community is not so much here. But actually, after they started this like meetup, a lot of people started to come. It's good, but but yeah, it's very it's just very different comparing to Hubertman. For sure. It I also mean, so much depends on the person managing, you know, the community. That's true. You're just one of the most perfect people I've ever met, you know, to be a oh, community manager. You. you have such an amazing personality that fits that role so much. And uh, yeah. I mean, honestly, one of the most difficult things to do is to build like a strong community, I think, mm. uh, in a co-working place. And uh, yeah. I think Hubut, I mean, so far from all the co-working places that I've tested and or tried, uh, it's still at the best community that I that I experience, and it's really because of you, I think, because mm. uh, you did so much, yeah, great things there. Because you know, like Yelis, fun fact, not fun fact, but I mean, like in the beginning of my career there at Hubut, uh, I was actually applying for a junior events manager, right? So like most of my work was actually focusing more on the events itself. I don't mm. really know that a community manager is a thing, so I was like, <laughs> eh. Well, what is a community manager? Because somehow we had that role. And then what I do was only like events. And then um, after uh, after a couple of years, like two years working there, they, they decided to give me a promotion to become a community manager. Mm. Um, and I was like, hey, what is community manager? <laughs> what did they do? But actually after discussing it, it's also kind of aligned with what I do before, which is events. Because somehow yeah. with events, it's also a platform for a community manager uh -huh. to make sure to, you know, like um, making sure that the community is there. That's a platform where we can uh, bring everyone together, uh, where everyone can also collaborate uh, on their in the events. You know, like at Hubert, we had a lot of events. Mm -hmm. I guess that's what makes Hubert very strong in terms of community. Right. The events uh, definitely help. Yeah. 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 Like learning events, social events. Um, yes. Here, I mean, not, there's a couple of co-working space started to doing that here, even this co-working space as well. Mm -hmm. But it's just not there. I, I don't know why. But yeah, uh, community manager. So interesting. Um, it, was there still something more actually that you wanted to 
on the topic that you wanted to talk about that you want to talk about? Mm. Actually, I have I the first one is growth. The second one. Oh no! Like the first one, is there still something oh, that you kind of wanted to? Yeah. No. More dive I guess into that, I, or or. I guess I guess it's opened up my mind so much about our like conversation before Ellis because sometimes, uh, I mean, like in the beginning, uh, I didn't really thought about it so much <laughs> when it comes to professional journey and how I growth on my professional uh, life as well um yeah it's a good i mean for me it's a good reminder and i guess there's a lot of things that i can try to apply to the company that i'm working on right now because working as a people uh people manager mm -hmm. in a startup company i never had experience in there as well right so it's still like actually right now my i jumping into a into something that i don't really know that much Mm -hmm. But I'm so glad that the the people that I've worked there, they're pretty much open to a lot of my ideas. Actually, the reason why I joined this company in the beginning, because he was also, well, he was a Hubert member before, and he was actually the one who reaching out to me and he was like, hey, Cash, I guess mm -hmm. you have this, uh, you have this persona where you can bring people together. So we we would like to making sure that the people who are in our company are satisfied and then making sure that they have a learning experience there as well inside the company we would like to make sure that everyone is happy and then making sure that everyone have a career growth as well when they're coming into the company so i guess you're the right person for 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 doing that so i was like eh? yeah. <laughs> so you i are, just though. i just uh I mean, it's it's been great. Uh, I I I wouldn't complain at all because a lot of things, a lot of new things that I learned from there, which makes me think as well. I guess that's part of the growth. Exactly right. Mm. When yeah. you learn new things, or when you have to do new things mm. as an individual or as a group, you grow because mm. you kind of level up. You know, you get some experience points. Yeah, yeah, I yeah, agree. Okay, yeah, I guess I guess that's it. Uh, the reason the reason in the beginning why I would like to come up with that topic because that's been something that I have in mind this uh -huh. past week, and I just curious on like what 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 do you think about that and how you see growth for yourself. Great topic. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Thanks, um, man. Let me actually see another one that i had uh okay something very different okay uh which one of the two first okay let me ask this um so okay like you are like such a positive person you know like when whenever i saw you in who boots because that's mainly where i saw you are at the events you know <laughs> You're always smiling, you're always happy, mm. like it's incredible. But I'm actually curious to ask you, and I also ju just thought for myself, so I will share some things too, but mm -hmm. I actually wanted to know like, what do you do when you don't feel happy? Like when you're feeling down, like mm. are there specific things that you think about now that help you to sort of, yeah, elevate? your your moods mm. that's actually part of the other other thing that i would like to cover as well actually okay is it very um, it's it, it's uh, very much I, the same guess, or is it a bit different? i guess it's it's it, it's it's related because for me i was i was like to discuss a little bit about mindset and okay. when you're asking me about that question mm. i guess um a lot of things the reason why I'm like this because I love talking to people, but of course there's some there's some times when I feel super down and then very low. But I guess so. I'm I'm a type of person who's very extrovert. Um, but as an yep. extrovert people, I might say it takes a of course it takes a lot of energy. Um, but when I'm feeling down. 
What do you do when you think about it now, a moment when you were feeling down that you were like, ah, this helped me, you know, to feel less down. And uh, if you need some time to think, I can already share one of the things that I do. Uh, or um, I can give you some a little bit of time there. Um, you can you let 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 share yours first. And, and that really sure. doesn't have to be t complicated things, right? Most very simple things help often. Uh, mm -hmm. So one of the first things that I had is uh, super simple, but when I think about what helps me is is to exercise is to oh, be okay. out my head and to be in my body. And mm -hmm. so when I'm feeling down, I mean, I when I'm also not feeling down, I go and exercise. But especially when I feel down, I'm like, all right, you know, let me go and uh, walk or climb. Mainly climb helps me a lot. So, yeah, I just go to the climbing gym and afterwards mm -hmm. I feel so much better. Helps, mm -hmm. you know, every time. That's one. I, okay. Um, I got one of the activities. More. Oh, okay. All right. Do you want to share all of them first to me? Maybe it yeah, helps. Yeah, all right. Me. Um, <laughs> okay. Uh, then another very simple one is to simply, you know, when you feel down, what helps is to call someone uh, and mm. to actually talk. And I think um, uh, I used to have like uh, struggle with this to to mm. be okay with not being okay. Or, or mm. to not feel okay and to actually say that to someone. Uh, but if you're someone, if someone comes to you to ask you for advice, you always feel great, right? I mean, it feels nice mm -hmm. to be able to help yeah. someone. Of and course. that's always what I try to tell myself that other people really want to help you. And mm. it, for some people, it can be a tricky thing to go and call someone and mainly because mm. they don't want to be bothering someone, for example. Mm -hmm. uh, but if you have that, thoughts then just to say that i mean you know remind mm -hmm. yourself that it feels pretty nice to actually you know have someone come to you to ask for advice or for help uh so but yes yeah, calling a friend you know <laughs> uh it just talking with someone sharing what you're feeling it's such a good mm -hmm. thing um another thing is uh, uh this is more sort of from our therapy but mm -hmm. you can write down like when you're feeling down, there might be certain thoughts, you know, dominating your head. And it's to actually write those thoughts down, the automatic thoughts that you're having from like, I don't know, like I've like no one likes me or something. I don't know. Mm -hmm. uh, and then actually writing next to it, rational response. Mm -hmm. So writing down all the automatic thoughts that you're having that are m making you feel the way that you're feeling now. And then just taking a rational response to, like thinking just rationally about it like how true is this you know mm. how true is it that no one likes me uh, mm. and then if you rationally think about it you know everyone is someone that likes them this is just an mm. example right uh, mm. but you can do this about any feeling like oh i feel alone mm. there's no one t for me okay mm. that's an automatic thought okay write down the rational response there's people there that you can call right so mm. you're not completely alone uh, mm. That's another sort of thing that I use when I'm feeling mm. down. And then the last one um, uh, is is just sort of, uh, I, I just wrote down like six things. It's basically to go for a walk and mm. just look at, you know, on your walk, look at six things that you find very beautiful. You know, like if you're in a forest, mm. uh, you see a beautiful tree, just look at it. Mm and pay attention to it, just look at it for a couple of minutes. And it's just mainly mm. a sort of mindfulness exercise. Mm. And it's getting out of your head a bit and more in your mm. body and feeling. And when you're feeling down, paying attention to the beautiful things that are just in your surrounding, it can be mm. in so many things, uh, I don't know, always lifts my, uh, my mood again. Mm. So... These were just okay. four things that I kind of directly thought about when I feel down that helped me. Mm. I get, so if I, if I can share like yes, my please. thoughts and that, I mean, like after, after this, I guess this is something that I've been uh, feeling recently as well. Like something that I've been struggling myself as well. And I'm trying my best to find a way on how can I cure that. 
you know, cure, whatever. <laughs> but um, when I'm when I'm in that situation, sometimes uh, I just go by myself mm -hmm. because, of course, I usually surrounded by people, and then sometimes it's also draining, right? Like <laughs> being around people, and then someone coming up to you, and then listening to stories. I mean, I love that. Sure. Uh, don't uh, don't get me wrong. I, I because I love talking to people, and I love meeting people, but. But your batteries, you know, need to be but, charged sometimes yeah. too by alone time. Yeah. Uh, one thing that I just learned actually by being a community manager before, uh -huh. knowing that I have to be like mostly like 18 to like 10 to 18 hours, not not 18, 10 hours, let's say, being around member. Yeah. And then kind of like being the person who's like, oh, okay, how is everyone doing? And, you know, um, one thing that I learned so much uh, of that experience is basically having some time for yourself. Mm. Um, so let's say like with the work that I used be used to do before, I work from Monday to Friday, right? And mm. then that's the time for me to be socialized with people, like being around members or being around the people uh, that I met. Uh, and then on the weekend, how can I recharge? It's basically, I just go or have some time for myself. Mm. Um, like I, I just do things that I don't that I want to do but by right. myself mm -hmm. uh sometimes I just go to let's say in Ubud I just go to Champohan Rich Walk and just have a like a little walk surrounded right, walk. by nature and then it's just it, it leveling up my mood so much already yeah. listening to music uh mm -hmm. while doing that uh is really helpful because I love music mm -hmm. and uh, I just listen to the music that I love and then looking up to the, to the uh, surroundings. Yeah. Um, I'm so grateful that Bali is surrounded by that. So uh, it's easier for me to do it. I don't know what I'm going to do in Jakarta, but I guess it's going to be the same, but the experience is just going to be different. Are you going but, to Jakarta? Um, I'm actually going there for a couple of days, but it's okay. I, I, you're uh, not leaving Bali, right? No, not, not, okay, no, okay, no, no, that's, that's never an option. <laughs> yeah. I don't want to, but, but yeah, having, having some time for yourself to yeah. recharge, um, is actually very important. Um, knowing that myself as an extrovert as well, of yep. course, you thought that as an extrovert, oh, okay, you always put in this smile or like, you know, be the face. But actually when, when you're feeling down and you just want, you, you just need to differentiate where, where, when is you, you need to be aware when is the time for you to meet people mm -hmm. and the time for you to recharge so yeah. then you can meet people again, you know, because of course, as an extrovert, I actually get the energy from people yep. when I'm around it by people, uh, and I talk to the people who have like a good energy. Mm -hmm. I don't know, maybe it sounds woo woo, but yeah, I get you. Yeah. For me, you know, like when, when you're surrounded like a positive energy, people it's just making me like, ah, oh, okay, it's fine, it's good. Yeah. But you know, uh, it depends on the situation as well. But yeah, having some time for yourself, listening to music, or do mm -hmm. things that you like to do for a couple of days, day or day. Um, yeah. to reach out is very important. Uh, I agree. Uh, the second one, I agree with you on writing down your thoughts. Mm -hmm. uh, I was actually started to do my journaling as well this past two weeks, yeah. three weeks, I guess. Um, and it's been helping me so much on figuring out uh, on my mood, on my emotion, on my feelings, because uh, after writing it down, all the things that I have in mind and looking back to it, you started to recognize, ah, okay, you had that feelings. And when you're having that feelings, what happens to you? What do you feel? Because with journaling, um, what I learned mm -hmm. uh, is basically just doing it by the end. Well, for me, it's the end of the day where you don't really have to think about anything. Mm -hmm. um, you just, make a time for like one hour or, or even for me, like sometimes it's 30 minutes or 15 minutes of writing. And then I just writing down all the thoughts that I have in my, I don't really have to think about what I should write. Just put your pens down and then right. writing down everything. And then afterwards, yep. after a couple of weeks doing it and then looking up to it, it's really helped me so much on recognizing my emotion, recognizing about 
how I react towards this feelings or emotion when I had it. Um, but yeah. It, was there a specific reason why you started with the journaling? Because you said that you started with it three weeks ago. Yeah. Yeah. Or just because you were like, of you know, course. <laughs> let me try this. Um, I mean, this is something that I've been heard a lot from uh, the people that I met in ah, Hubud, dude, the journal right? or in Hubud. Yeah, doing journaling for yeah. uh, reconnect to reconnect with yourself or something. So I was just like, okay, I never done this. Let me just try it, and mm -hmm. it's it's been great. It's been it's been interesting. Um, I. I actually don't really doing it anymore because some sometimes I get tired. But uh, <laughs> you looking fall asleep up, or? not not no, <laughs> not like me falling asleep. But it's just like ah, so much yeah to, to write down. It but, takes some energy too to write uh, stuff down act, every day, right? Actually, yeah. Yeah. But yeah. after afterwards, uh, looking back to all the things that I've been writing down the past weeks. Mm. Actually, it opened up my mind as well about what is happening and then reckon, like knowing about my emotion better, how mm -hmm. I feel in that situation, how what is happening with me, something like that. So it's very interesting uh, exercise, I might mm -hmm. say. Um, and what else? When I'm feeling, yeah, uh, I was agree with you as well on calling your friends, not uh, because... Uh, I mean, I when when we can share, and basically it's just a human being, I guess. When we can share our thoughts and get feedback from people, it's such a nice feeling. And then having a um, having someone listen to your um, stories and then get the feedback out of it. Uh, especially coming up from the people who loves you so much, like your best friends. Yep. Let's say, um, it's it, yeah, it, uh, it helps me so much when I have a bad days or like going through a bad situation, because uh, talking about it, especially especially to some of your closest friend, um, it open up your perspective so much on how you deal mm. with that situation yeah um, it helps because, to have a second opinion often yeah because uh of course you have this thought i'm a type of person who is very overthinking mm. um and sometimes when i'm talking with my friends they they're giving me another perspective yeah it makes me think as well but it's a new way of thinking which helped me on opening up my mind better yeah towards some situation um uh, i guess hearing hearing other uh, other people experience when we have a certain challenge uh can also help because everyone experience is different and mm -hmm. everyone's is reacting different way on certain type of challenge and when you hear another people experience on how to solve the challenge itself that you have uh it open up your mind on yeah. how to uh solve those things let's say for yourself i mean at the end of the day you're the one who's going to decide on what you're going to do right it's true but but having those thoughts and uh, i mean having those uh things shared to your to your friends and then get feedback from them yeah, it's amazing. It gives possibilities to then eventually, like you said, choose, you know, how to best approach whatever you're mm -hmm. struggling with or going through. Yeah, true. Yeah. Any other things that you do or think about, you know, when you're feeling down? Or do you feel like those things that you just shared are sort of mainly the ones that really help you? I guess, I guess that's the only thing. But uh, let's say if it's just like uh, one of those bad days, Mm -hmm. I just listen to music. That's the easiest way for me. All right. Uh, listening to my favorite music and having this like positive music about, uh, and then it's just yeah, like me boosting up my mood again. What type of music do you mostly listen to? Mainly like happier music or mm -hmm. mixed with sad music or or like any genre. I guess, like it, you... I guess it depends on the feeling that you're 
okay. go through, right? Let's okay. say yeah. if I if I if I want to feel happy, I go to happy song. If, that makes sense. Sometimes when I when I'm feeling sad, uh, I actually listen to sad song and then I feel better afterwards as well. Mm-hmm. Like, oh, okay, I feel connected with this artist so much exactly. and how they write the lyrics, and somehow it helps me to burst up my emotion, you know. Um, so for me, listening to music, it's been very helping. The easiest and the quickest way, at least, uh, to to solve uh, the problem. Um, but yeah, uh, one of the other thing that I'm still learning to do uh, is actually to just embrace it. Like when you're mm. feeling super sad, but yeah, I just don't yeah. know how to embrace it in a good way. But to just I be mean, like, all right, I'm feeling just, sad and did, that's yeah. how it is now. And that's fine. Yeah, yeah. I need, yeah, that's something that I'm still learning yeah. because let's say I, mm, this, past, this, past, this past week, there's a lot of things happening in my life that somehow it makes me feeling sad and I just don't know how to deal with that situation. Um, so I was like, okay, now I'm here. And I guess all the things that I have to do is just embrace the feeling that right now you're feeling sad and it is okay. And there will be a better days. Just believe in the, like, you know, changing my mindset yep. a little bit um, towards that feelings. If you feel sad, just, just be sad as long as you can. <laughs> and, and when you're ready, you move on towards that and, it's okay to have those feelings. I don't know. I, I don't know where I'm going with this. But yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's yes. kind of like all over the place, man. But, but you know, you're right. You don't always have to do a crazy amount of things to become happy. Or, you know, it's sometimes just yeah. about sitting with it and being like, all right, this is how today I'm feeling. And uh, mm-hmm. that's okay too. Can be happy all the time. Mm-hmm. Um, but I am also a fan of like, okay, if you can actually do something about it, you know, mm. you feel you feel sad because you had a, a fight with a with someone, mm. you know, go and call them and and make it better. <laughs> mm. But there's certain things, of course, that yeah, just require you to, to kind of just be with it and uh, mm. and kind of accept the feeling how you're feeling, which mm. is which is fine. Yeah, actually, like I'm not a type of person who who talks so much about my feelings to people because I'm very protected with it. Mm. Actually, that's me. <laughs> but but yeah, so there's some some certain type of situation where I just don't feel like to share to people because maybe it's too much for them to handle. Mm-hmm. So there there must be one time when when I just have to deal with that feelings alone and then I just need to you know like just feel it like suck mm-hmm. it up and just do it let's say and just be in that feelings and be okay with it and then yeah gosh you, you'll get better just remember you but know, it's not easy money. right it's never easy. yeah it's not easy it's not easy <laughs> <laughs> that's why i've been in this journey for two weeks for making sure that everything is okay <laughs> but yeah it's okay there are there will be a better days. Exactly. That's what I'm that's kind of like my mantra right now. Oh my god, sounds so woo-woo again. <laughs> nah, but it's a good mantra. Uh but, one that I know. use often is that this too shall pass. Mm, you know? Yeah. Uh, you can use this for, for for both for good things and bad things. So if you're in mm. uh, a really awesome moment with friends, you know, to remind mm. yourself like, yep, this will not last forever. But if mm. you're a really bad one, to also remind yourself like this will also not last forever. There will mm. be, yeah, like you said, better days. But how how do you feel? Uh, how do you react uh, actually when? Because when you're saying like, okay, this too shall pass, and then you're like, okay, if the moment is like too good, <laughs> you you also use that, right? So I was like, because I'm a type of person when I'm very happy, mm. I'm just happy. Yes, like, yes. I don't want to think about it. I'm happy. But when I'm sad, that's the time when I when it struck me so much that I have that feeling. So that should, that's too shall pass. That applies. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but when I'm happy, I just, I just, how, how, 
how, how I get sometimes I have moments where I'm like in a conversation with friends and I'm or like you know somewhere very beautiful I'm like mm. that I've just stopped and and just you know stand there for a second and I'm like this is such an awesome moment mm -hmm. and then I just sometimes quickly let that phrase you know this too shall pass kind of enter my head to really mm -hmm. just be grateful mainly and to mm -hmm. enjoy what's happening now ah, okay all right yeah but like okay. I mean most of the time like you you know when I'm happy I'm just happy and I don't always think about standing still and being grateful for it I'm just like this is so great <laughs> and that's all you know um okay. but I think it's it's yeah uh, often I do remind myself just to be very mm -hmm. grateful for the amazing moment that's happening right now. Yeah, and I it takes agree. maybe like a milli, like a little, like a second, right? It doesn't have mm -hmm. to take minutes. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, yeah, I guess just being present and being aware. Yeah, it's of the situation, basically being present so. for her. yeah. That's it. Yeah, that's true. Agree. Let's, if you want, move to mm -hmm. another topic of yours. Uh, but I first I... have to quickly go to the toilet. Oh yeah, sure, sure, sure. Yeah. No worries. <laughs> let me let me do that as well. Next topic from Cash. Yes. Ah, um, actually, I actually I don't really have a lot of option right now, uh, Hillis, because first one I already we already discussed a little bit about. Um, that was uh, about. Growth. Growth, yes. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. And then uh, mindset. That one is uh, that's that's kind of like covering up a little bit uh, on their on our last conversation. Okay. Then if you want to go to the last one that you have, that's that's great too. The last one is uh, uh, actually around community, and we already <laughs> talked about that a little bit. But uh -huh. maybe one thing that I'm very curious, uh, knowing that. You've been traveling around, and this is something that I've been uh, into a lot of people that I've met here as well in uh, not only Ubud, but also most of the people that I met here in Bali. Um, like, we have a lot of like, like people who travel here. Like, I met a lot of people who have been traveled, and I, so. I believe that you're one of them. Uh, you've been traveled around. Um, if you if you can share me uh mm -hmm. like what is why 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 for you travel is very uh why why travel for you is a thing mm -hmm. and what do you like so much about what what do you like about traveling mm -hmm. um because for me i never been traveled that much and at least like it's only I only been to Bali and a couple of country and that's it. Um, mm. But what's the most? Or what what makes you like traveling? Good question. Um, because basically, yeah, I've been I've traveled a bit. Yes, <laughs> mm -hmm. um, you know, because I started like traveling like long term when I was eighteen. Uh, oh, but I was wow. like in a very bad place in myself, uh, mm -hmm. like where I was living, I, like or mm -hmm. you know, like life in general was pretty dark for me uh, inside. Mm -hmm. And uh, I found like a volunteer project in South Africa uh, mm -hmm. to to do, and I traveled two months to there, stayed at a host family, and it just opened up like everything for me like new possibilities mm. new people a complete different you know surrounding that opens also like possibilities and new insights mm. and just experiencing a whole different culture like it was so awesome to know that life could look so different just depending mm. on where you are in the world and I don't know. From there on, then I just like traveled for years, basically on mm. uh, around the world, and every time it's just the same thing. Like it's personal growth, actually. Like I grow so mm. much as a person because uh, you you're in new places, new challenges that you have to face, 
and just the people that you meet uh i don't know so many amazing people everywhere everywhere mm. in in you know yeah every just corner of the world there is amazing people uh and yeah i i i don't know i just learned so much from traveling that i just wanted to keep and also of course seeing new things right seeing mm. new you know what you see in bali you can see in belgium you know mm. <laughs> like you don't see wild monkeys here in belgium because that would be crazy uh or other stuff right you don't have a jungle yeah. here so it's just also that just seeing the amazing things that the world has to offer and mm. yeah uh, yeah you, I, it, it, there's so it many things to... to be honest mm -hmm. but these were what, just some <laughs> yeah what is what is the best country that you ever visited i have one although every you know it's it's also a very different uh, difficult question because every country mm -hmm. brought something amazing i would say but the the one that i would say that i thought was like uh, i could live here or i i would like to go there again mm -hmm. uh it was new zealand oh okay you know it's like yeah. you have australia and new zealand all the way yeah. to the end of the world <laughs> yeah yeah uh, but i i was there for three months and bought a car second-handed from other travelers mm -hmm. and then drove with my ex-girlfriends from the north to the south back to the north which took us mm -hmm. like three months um and i don't know i just i mean it's for me personally right it's like it has mountains mm -hmm. so much nature mm -hmm. very friendly people mm -hmm. i don't know i just had an amazing experience there uh, and okay yeah i thought it was great <laughs> Okay. I mean, um, I heard, well, I have one of my friends as well, one of my closest friends who was living in New Zealand and she mm. loves it so much. Yeah. Um, she stayed there for like three years or something. Oof, that's and crazy. I heard, yeah, I heard, I heard a lot of like good stories there because they, they're pretty much like, I mean, it's not as, of course, it's not as crowded as Australia because New Zealand is like you, there's a lot of nature there yeah. but yeah i heard the the way of living there is so nice and yep. uh one of the other country that i've been getting a lot of like recommendation as well actually from people mm -hmm. is portugal um, oh yeah portugal is great yep oh uh, because for like right now the reason why i asked this question uh -huh. because i've been wanting to travel like I, I really want to start travel again, hopefully by next year. Yeah. And I just want to like get another perspective, like, you know, coming up from you, what's your best country to visit? And um, I'm actually uh, thinking to travel to Europe, hopefully. Oh man, you know, that would be been, awesome. Yeah, I've been, I've been planning this for like long time, but hopefully next year, uh, I actually wanted to go to Portugal and a couple of other countries. Is it, yeah, it's like Portugal, the first one that you kind of want to go to. I mean, it's a great option, by the way. Mm, uh, but yeah, and are there any other countries in? Because like it, w when you're in Europe, it's so easy to, to it's visit. It's so easy to travel, right? So many countries because they're all just yes. next to each other, right? Are exactly. there any other ones that you're like, oh yeah, I really want to go there? I guess the the reason why uh, I choose Europe, let's say, in the beginning, yeah. is because, of course, the opportunities of like visiting any other countries around it is easier compared to like you're going to, I don't know, other like America, so far from each other. Yeah. Uh, I mean, not the country, but you know, uh, the yeah, places yeah, yeah. and stuff. Like in in Europe, I heard it's very interesting for first time traveler like going far. <laughs> Because in each country they have different culture, and it's I love different language, that. different language, different I don't know yes. infrastructure, environment. Uh, let's say you can see a lot of difference when you're visiting, uh, let's say Amsterdam, yeah. and then uh, or Netherlands, mm -hmm. and you're going to Portugal. Let's say, um, like the way I of love, mm -hmm. I personally love Europe so much. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Uh, it, Europe is amazing. So I could 100% recommend you to go to Europe. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and and sorry to interrupt, of course, but uh, mm -hmm. and if you're like in Europe and you're close to Belgium, 
you know, then uh, you're so, I, I totally have a place for you to stay at if you uh, want to be here. Yeah. <laughs> I will let you know then. <laughs> Plus, if because, you go to Netherlands, yeah. you're kind of passing Belgium anyway. It's, yeah, that's true. Yeah. Actually, I mean, it's kind of like on my map as well, because I would start, I, I would love to start my journey in Europe, in, Europe, in Amsterdam. Uh, not Amsterdam particular, but Netherlands. In Netherlands, because, yeah. yeah, because actually it turns out I have a family there. <laughs> and then family I was like, there? Hey. Yeah, it turns out I have. Um, I guess it's also because of the history before. And then uh, I had a couple of my closest, uh, not closest, but it's a, uh, it's a relative of my grandpa and then they they've been deciding to live there since a long time ago and then and then now actually i was telling my mom like hey i want to go and visit europe and i would like to go to netherlands and she said like you know like we actually have family there <laughs> and i was like eh? what huh? and then uh yeah you you can actually uh visit them and then you uh, but you never let me met introduce them. I never met them. So, wow. you know, I was I was actually planning uh, my Europe trip before the corona. And then I supposed to go in May last year. Oh, you already had a date? Every, uh, yeah, I already have a date uh, okay. last year. But it's it's fall down, of course, because of yeah. uh, corona. But as an Indonesian uh, traveling to Europe, there's a lot of like requirements uh, like applying for the visa, yeah. you need to do it uh, like at least two months ago, and then you mm. need to apply to the embassy. You know a lot of things, and then somehow, of course, when you're applying it to visit your family, it's easier for you to get the visa uh, to go there. So that's why my mom was connecting me to this family member that I never knew before, and I was like, hey. And then, hey, this is Cash. Yeah, I, I'm actually thinking to visiting uh, Netherlands. And I heard that uh, I'm I'm the son of Faiza, which is my mom. Yeah. I'm the son of Faiza, and I would like to visit there. And they're like, oh, hi, nice to meet you. How cool and is then that? She, it's so cool. <laughs> and then I was like, she sending me a picture of her family that I never saw before. And she just said like, okay, so this is my son and this is my daughter. This is my husband. So we live in Den Haag. I was like, okay. Oh, yeah. I heard yeah. about Den Haag because we had a couple of, well, the, the, from the people that I met at Hubert, we had a lot of like Dutch people here. As yeah, well, right? probably. And then, yeah. and then uh, I, I had a couple of uh, friends who lived there. So I was like, oh, okay. Oh, this is Cash. I live in Bali right now. And then, yeah, it's it's so weird, but I would I would visit Netherlands first uh, because of that, um, yeah. like my surprise family, <laughs> and then uh, and then I would like to go to Portugal because a lot of people saying that Portugal is the best way, uh, the the best one <laughs> so far. And I mean, and every yeah. European country is so different that it's. Mm. But Portugal, I mean, there's a lot of digital nomads too. It's very i mean way cheaper than the netherlands for example or, or scandinavia like norway mm -hmm. um and it's pretty it's beautiful there yeah so it's definitely yeah. all in all a, a beautiful place yes but also places like austria you know if you like like mountains or the the south of germany like bavaria that area is mm -hmm. called is so stunning and mm -hmm. very different as well again you know, different okay. language, different culture again. Um, yeah, there, there's a yeah. lot of options. Uh, and I was yeah, also I, thinking, I was if you love waterfalls, uh, Iceland, have you heard of it? Oh, of course, I know. Yeah. It's it's pretty expensive, I, I guess. Um, but it's just a paradise of waterfalls. There's waterfalls everywhere. And they're really? stunning. Okay. Yeah. Just keep it as an option, I would say. Maybe you know someone there, right? Uh, the yeah, only thing that true. you have of being, you know, of having worked in Hubud is that, you know, people everywhere. <laughs> yeah. So you could yeah, literally... Super grateful. Yeah. You could almost stay in every European country and know someone, <laughs> I guess. <laughs> if I go to Norway, I have Benedicta. Uh, already. Yeah, she would love to host you, I would, I think, yes. I know, I love her and I miss her so much. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, Europe... That's why I would like to go there because I guess it's easier with 
all of my connection that I have there as well. And then I heard it's a good place for first time travelers to go yeah. to explore um, and a lot of different culture from each country. So I was like, okay. Um, also, the food is so different mm-hmm. almost in every country. I cannot, I can imagine. <laughs> so it's so crazy how much variety you have in such a small scale. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I'm excited for you actually that, that you're going to Europe. Uh, yeah. Hopefully next year then, I guess. Yeah. Actually, I, uh, I bought myself a festival, co- uh, festival tickets for next year already. Um, festival I don't know tickets how's... to where? Yeah. Uh, Barcelona. <laughs> Uh, which uh, festival? Uh, it's Primavera. Uh, uh, it's probably a, a pretty new one, I guess. Um, well, they have a great lineup, so that's why I go there. Okay, a lot of like my favorite artists are playing there, so I awesome. I all one of the other places that I would like to go when I'm in Europe is also Spain. Barcelona is uh, great. So Barcelona, it is. I actually so, lived there for a while. It's an awesome really? city. Really? Yeah, it's an awesome city. Right. I'm so excited <laughs> and I well actually like I love concerts so much and mm-hmm. uh, my goal if I if I really have if I had a chance to travel uh, I would like to check out any other concert or, like any concert or festival that they have on that country mm-hmm. um, because I used to be like a concert geek, just so you know since I was like 13 I guess uh-huh. I had I had my first concert when I was 13 Damn. and it was, it was the time when it changed my life so much. And that's mm. also the reason why I decided to become an events. Like I would like to work around events. That's why I applied to Hubud first around events. So I just don't know what am I going to do, but I know I love events so okay. because, because of concert and interesting. Festival. Very yeah. interesting. Would you never love to host a music festival then man that's actually no that's actually my dream yeah. like if you can ask me if you if you ask me what are one thing that i would like to do before i die i would like to make my own music festival one day uh, because i i love music i love events i know how great it is and every time i go to a music festival or a concert there's just this certain feelings when you feel like so alive so nice to be surrounded people just going there listening to the music that you love together with the other fans it's so nice but this should be possible right like you have the skills you just have to apply it to a different industry i know i know <laughs> actually it was in it was in my mind before uh, i mean but I look was... you're still you're still super young right like you have still years and years and years but you totally could do this at some point i would say yeah, I would do it. I would do it for sure. When I yeah, when I have the opportunity to do it, uh, I would. I, I would definitely take it. Yeah. Let me know. I'll be uh, coming to that festival and. Of course, everyone is invited. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, okay. One one question about traveling as well, because mm-hmm. I'm very curious. What. Uh, if I can ask you, what is the down south, uh, downside of traveling? Uh, the first one that what I... What would it be? Yeah, the first one that comes to mind right now, um, there's probably oh yeah, other ones, I guess, but uh, the one that just comes directly to my mind now, and this is a little bit of a funny one to say as a downside. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, it's... <laughs> So it's sometimes that you, when you travel, that you meet so many people, so mm-hmm. many amazing people mm-hmm. that you can't, you know, always see. I mean, s- most of the people that I have met, I have, you know, I will not see again, mm-hmm. you know, that I really felt a connection with or that was li- really like, oh, these are great I mean, awesome people, but Mm -hmm. because there's so many people that you meet uh, that you have to say just goodbye a lot of times. And it's it's the same like going to Bali, I think. Like, uh, I love it a lot to go to Bali, uh, but a lot of times, yes. I mean, well, okay, these days with the internet, it helps that you can stay connected. Mm -hmm. But most of the time, it just kind of stays with that 
that you're just mm -hmm. uh, connected online, but because of distance, you know, if someone lives in the US, it's a bit far to, uh, mm -hmm. to just see each other in, mm -hmm. in the weekends or something. Mm -hmm. um, and again, this is like a, a funny kind of downside, right? Because it's amazing to be able to meet so many people. Mm -hmm. um, but this is where I personally also after a while, like now, felt like to have a bit more balance in my life and, and mm -hmm. travel less mm -hmm. to just connect more with the people in the surrounding that I'm mainly staying in. Mm -hmm. uh, and I was so much gone, so much traveling, uh, and never really staying too much in a place mm -hmm. that I always had to say goodbye to people. After, like, and, and that was a little bit of a downside to me after a while. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Okay. But That's... again, it's a two-sided mm -hmm. thing, right? Like, they're, it's so amazing. But okay. you need some balance with everything, I guess. And that's mainly mm. what I'm saying then. I guess uh, the reason why I ask that is why, well, like, uh, like working in working here in Bali, especially in the hospitality industry before in a co-working space, especially um, having a lot of like community members from different countries. Of course, I, I pretty much kind of like traveling in like one side. <laughs> Like, you do, right? Well, in one space, right? Yes, like exactly. You can, you can learn about, like, new people from different countries, <laughs> different different culture. Yeah. But one of the downsides, let's say, is saying goodbye to all those people. Right. So you know I exactly kind of, what like, I talk about. So, right? so, so I, I'm pretty much aware of it. But yeah. i actually pretty curious uh, from your perspective as someone who say goodbye when you do travel. My because perspective? Yeah, because let's say like me uh, being the one who stay, it's it's really hard. Mm -hmm. um, but how how you let's say as a traveler saying goodbye? Because for me, like saying goodbye to people is right now it's kind of like one of those things. Ah, okay, just another goodbye. Yeah. But like you as a traveler who leave the place itself and then go to another place. And then okay saying hi again and then goodbye again okay that happens so what's your perspective on that i actually i remember that uh i stopped saying goodbye to people and just said instead you know thank you because i don't know mm. i just didn't after a while like to say the words goodbye all the time mm. um yeah but my I guess for you, uh -huh. no, go on. No, I mean, like, I guess for you is thank you. And for me, it's a see you later. See you later. <laughs> because, yeah, I don't know. I yes. mean, I, I would love to meet them again. So I, I just, I guess. Exactly. And you never know in the end, right? There's definitely some mm -hmm. people that I've met that I do still see, you know? Um, so that's why exactly I also don't per se want to say goodbye with the same reason as you. Like, it, mm -hmm. it's not per se that it's per se has to be goodbye. Uh, there's mm -hmm. always a possibility to see them again. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Okay, that's good. And it doesn't uh, have to be a sad thing, you know. Goodbye. That's why I said yeah. just rather like, thank you for, you know, everything for hosting mm -hmm. me or whatever. Uh, mm -hmm. I rather want to make something uh, sort of more positive out of it instead of like goodbye always sounds sometimes more of a sad thing to say or like mm -hmm. a negative, well, not negative, but yeah, more sad, I guess. Yeah, yeah. Sad. Yeah. So I just skip it and just say like, thanks. Yeah. And, you know, maybe see you in the future or something. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Thanks for sharing, Alice. <laughs> <laughs> no worries. Good insight. <laughs> Um, yeah, I guess that's all the thing that I have in mind so far in terms of the uh, topics. Do you have awesome. anything? Yeah, great topic. Um, so I have a last one for you. Mm -hmm. And I uh, want to ask your advice. So... From Cash? <laughs> yeah, okay. for sure, man. You have knowledge. So I... Uh, let me just read what I wrote it. Okay, like, okay, so by now people kind of know, I guess, that you are the community and event manager or you have been in Hubut for three years, like you said. Mm -hmm. um, 
I'm curious because I also, in my own startup, want to hold more events. Mm -hmm. And I'm curious to ask you for advice. Like, do you, what, what are essential tips uh, on organizing and holding a good event that mm. you know from experience, from having held maybe events that didn't go right and that you now know how to do better? Are there anything, anything's coming to mind that you know, like, okay, if you want to hold an event, these are some essential things uh, to do. Mm. And I also have two events that I want to show you. And mm. I just want to see if you can look at it and say like, okay, I would do this a bit different or, or mm. any input that you have. But uh, okay. if, if there's something already coming to mind that you have like, okay, if you want to hold an event, it's pretty essential that you do. I guess the one of the most essential thing that you need to do is to know your audience first. Mm. Like your, same as business, I guess. Like you need to know like who's your target audience, right? Gotcha. And then you need to know like what do they need. Yes. Instead of like uh, instead of like creating something that you have in mind and you're just like uh, doing mm. it. Um, I the reason why I said that is like that's by the way two very good points yes mm -hmm. um i you know i i created a couple of events uh before uh well you know uh at hubert and then yeah. uh somehow i was just do or like curate uh, like i didn't really curate the topic pretty well mm -hmm. i just i just do events so then it's just happened let's say uh, there was one of those days when I don't really have a lot of resources, uh, but somehow I was just like, oh, okay, let me just create an event. But I don't really know what, uh, even though that I know my audience was that person, but I don't really know what do they need, actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So when I creating that events that actually something, some topics that they don't really interested with, of course, why people have to join your events in the beginning because this is not the topic that they're interested in. Yep. So by by knowing your audience first and then knowing what do they need, uh, it's one of the essential things that uh, you need to have, mm. you need to do, or you need to think about uh, before you creating the events itself. Of course, creating the agenda, schedule, activities, it can comes later. Yeah. But when you're about to create an event, I guess you need to first see the target audience and what do they need. Yeah. Same as business. Uh, it's true. But, um, but yeah. Mm -hmm. No, I mean, uh, I had, I, I still remember like one time uh, I was talking to one of the biggest promoter here uh, in Indonesia. Uh, he's one of the person who brings like music festival here to Jakarta, uh, oh, yeah. which is of course, it's kind of like the center. And then uh, there was this one time uh, when we had a couple of discussion. He's actually the one who inspired me so much to go to, you know, go creating events because that's something that I pretty enjoy. But I just want to know like from his mm. inside, what, what was his experience? And then he, he told me, um, there was this one time when he was about to uh, bring an artist. He loved this artist so much, uh, but somehow uh, they don't really, you know, uh, because the target audience are the Indonesian or the Jakartans, right? Um, but somehow this artist is not pretty much well known yet mm -hmm. in Jakarta or in Indonesia. So he doesn't really decided to bring this person uh, or this artist to come to Jakarta in the beginning. So he always, uh, he always listening based on what are the requests from all the people in Jakarta. Let's say uh, once once in a while, he yeah. always creating this, uh, uh, well, at that time, Twitter was very famous. You know, everyone used Twitter. And he always just throw a question. Oh, okay. Hey, uh, who's artist that you want to bring to Indonesia right yeah, now? Yeah, and yeah. he just basically doing, uh, like creating the uh, events or concert based on the feedback that they get yeah. from the tweet itself um, rather than him just bringing like random artists uh, that he knows he likes. Yeah. And then when he's doing it here, it's 
such a bad luck. Like, like, let's say it doesn't work or the artist doesn't really work. Makes um, sense. Well, one, one of, uh, uh, yeah, I guess, yeah, I guess, I guess that's one, uh, that's one of the thing that I learned from him so much. And then something that I try to apply every time I create my own events or creating the programs, uh, to do uh, for my work uh, mm. I guess first listen to the audience uh, knowing uh, knowing your audience who is your audience yeah. get to know what are the th- uh, what are the things that they need uh, in terms <laughs> hey did it was no, it, was the, it was the there internet or? yeah it was the internet reset do you remember at the co-working space uh, well At Hubut, usually it always happen every midnight when the providers start to reconnect again. Like you need to disconnect and then reconnect again every oh. midnight because the router are trying to refresh. And I guess it's also because of the uh, what is it the the provider that they have. I don't know, but something like that. So that so that happens. <laughs> it's fine. Don't worry. Is that uh, okay? Oh- Yeah, yeah. What time yeah, is it actually over there? It's 12 midnight. Oh my god! All right. Are you a? a It's okay. Are you an evening person? Yes, I am. Okay. That's why I get the energy, and I have my coffee, you know, so I'm good. <laughs> um, but I mean, this is kind of the last topic anyway. So let's. Mm-hmm. Uh, um, you were just sharing what you would advise someone in do, like me uh, who wants to do mm-hmm. events more uh, I mean you already shared uh, some things already I don't know if you wanted to add something more to it uh, I also have two events already created that I just want to show maybe so you can mm-hmm. kind of look at it and be like okay this should be different but already the two things that you shared uh, on knowing what your audience wants uh, was mm-hmm. already pretty helpful I would say Um, but yeah. you want me to show it or? Sure, sure. I will, I, I, I'm actually very curious. Okay. And by no means, this is like a finished event. Uh, that's why I'm also still asking for feedback. Mm. Um, all right. Let me just share. All right. We're here with fishes again. <laughs> Uh, so this is actually a, an event of my startup, the IPS project, and mm-hmm. I, yeah, the events are called sort of like IPS journeys, more like mindful travel trips. Mm-hmm. Um, and I have right now, uh, well, three, uh, but two that I already sort of created, mm-hmm. but that this year I want to do i mean or next year in the summer when you know corona is ho- hopefully history um so uh let's just take this one uh so this is like a three day event where mm-hmm. i want to go and climb a mountain with people mm-hmm. and sort of the idea is to connect with nature and with you know your instincts uh and with other people like this one is mainly for guys uh so i wanted to make like a sort of guy trip um where you connect with guys in sort of a yeah use your instincts again to survive together to climb a mountain um but the main thing that i'm sort of worried about is that it's not yeah that that what you said uh, of know what your audience wants or know, you know, if, I don't know if someone is interested in this uh, and maybe if mm. it has to be a bit adjusted, the the topic of the event. Um, and I don't know if I maybe should share this to you so you can kind of scroll through it. Mm-hmm. Okay. You want me to share it? Yeah, that would, that would be great. Uh, Hold on, how do I share stuff here? On the chat box? Yeah, it's 
Ah ja, jetzt hier in der Top. Um, there we go. Okay. I also don't know if I really explain it now well and if maybe the description is better or worse, mm. but you can give me uh like straight down like honest, you know, um feedback. You don't have to be nice. Okay. Have you so so you've done this trip before? No, I've not. I've not done this trip before. That's why okay. I, I created it to do it actually last year, but then Corona, you know, and um, yeah, so I've not done it yet. So it's still, yeah, uh, very adjustable. But I just wanted to bring guys and yeah, um, often I feel like that guys are easier to connect when they do a shared activity that's more difficult with each other. And okay. that was sort of the idea to go and climb a mountain and yeah be in nature again and connect with each other a bit more okay and take right. your time to <clears throat> read and it's a bit more around well-being and mental health uh yeah okay Um, okay. Mm, okay. Okay. It's a very cool mountain, by the way. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I don't know if you're... I mean, just... I... <laughs> you're probably maybe not in stuff like climbing a mountain, although I could recommend it. Uh, but it's... Uh, yeah, I would like... It's good, the yeah. <laughs> I've climbed I mean, a lot I'm, of times. It's it's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> I'm I'm scared. I'm scared. Uh, you know, like I've been living here in Bali for like almost five years, four four years, five years, uh -huh. and I never like mount like hike a mountain, like even Agung or um, Mount Agung or well, Mount um, Batur. Mount that one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Batur, the one that everyone's go for, like sunrise. I never been because hiking is not really my thing. <laughs> well, yeah, okay, I get it. Uh, the climbing that one is pretty tiring. It's just kind of mm. like going straight up, kind of. Mm. Um, this one is more okay. Um, well, so far, I guess it's it's good. You're pretty much explaining about the agenda there. But does uh, it the topic it, uh... makes okay? Take your time first. Okay. Yeah, I I just. Read it quickly so I don't really see. You know, like one of the thing, Yelis, um, when it comes to creating events um, and then you want to promote your events as well, uh -huh. uh, having a having a cool, like on, on your writings, it needs to get all the information that you would like to share to the audience. That's very important. Mm. Uh, that's why like right now, um, I would like to go and read everything so then I can give you a feedback. In all there. right, I'm taking my pencil but, here to take some notes from you. May, yeah, maybe, but okay. Uh, you, you shared to me a little bit about the event, so I just want to see if I can see it on this website or not. Okay. Is it only men, actually, men? Um, well, is it? It's again, mm -hmm. uh, it's, uh, uh, it's something that I might change this, you know, details of this, but mainly because I just feel that guys mostly connect more on a deeper level with each other when they're doing mm -hmm. a difficult activity together okay. uh, and open up about personal things. Mm -hmm. Okay. But I think I might, my worry is that I'm doing a little bit too many things with these events and that with that, it's becoming unclear. What do you mean by a lot of things? Um, yeah, that we're climbing a mountain, that we're, mm -hmm. you know, talking maybe more about personal things along the way, that we're, mm -hmm. uh, you know, more connecting with each other in a way by surviving together. I don't know if it's too many. Well, let me let me leave 
your thoughts mm. and um well, yeah just uh share with but, you what you got but the re oh boy so bad I guess it's good. I mean, like reading reading into it, uh, it's pretty much clear on on the trip itself, um, mm -hmm. on on what's included, what's not. The picture is good. The price is there. The date is there. The instructor is there. It's good to have a couple of requirements. The instructor knowing that it's a program, right? Uh, requirements, okay. No, I don't. Okay, that's good. Day one agenda is there. Um, I guess I guess it's it's pretty much clear. Let's say like from the event event perspective, it's looking good. Mm -hmm. Um, it's pretty much clear on what you guys gonna do on the journey. Uh, you put all the information there in terms of the dates, the price. Mm -hmm. uh, But I don't know, yeah, with the website, is it a good thing to put there or not? To put it on the websites? Yeah, I don't, I, well, I don't know. I never really, I never, I, uh, like, but I'm also, online. when this will happen, I will also make, because what would you recommend? Like social media, I guess, right? Uh huh. Yeah, I will also put it on a Facebook uh, as an yeah. event and put it on other social media platforms yeah. also. It's just, this is sort of like the page with information on it where you can book mm. it. Okay. Okay, um, all looks good, but uh, the reason why I asked you that uh, question in the beginning, why is it only for men, but you already give me the the reason why, but I, I just want to make sure to like, uh, like back again with, with my, with my, my statement in the beginning, like you, is, is that your audience that you're looking for? I mean, uh, I know like this is part of Inner Picture Stories, which is your business, right? Mm -hmm. Do you have the community of it already or? Uh, it, I mean, this is not per se that I will, I mean, I will also promote it to my community. Uh, mm -hmm. But yeah, I, I just thought it was a good idea maybe to do it for an event for men only. Yeah, because mm -hmm. of the reason that I said, because have I mainly feel them? they connect with, yeah, difficult shared uh activities <laughs> yeah have you have you asked them yes that's a good question idea? um if other guys would be interested in this mm -hmm. um i mean i also had some girls who were interested in this so it's not okay. per se i, I like i don't want to exclude anyone it's just that event mm -hmm. that i thought like okay might be interesting to also have a focused group Uh, mm -hmm. like they have women groups or something you know like um okay. it's a different experience when there's a mixed gender right mm -hmm. and yeah. yeah i just was thinking more uh for that reason to that mm -hmm. but it's not like i don't want to make it mixed or something it's uh just an idea that i sort of had okay um i mean i might say it's good uh the, everything you need in terms of the information is pretty much there Mm -hmm. uh you already uh creating the agenda for it so it's pretty much clear around it um yeah um yeah what, i just i just uh -huh. what would you say could be different or better or yeah or what do you not like i guess it's not like i don't like it or you know uh what would be different or anything but mm -hmm. um i just i just uh one of my suggestion uh to you is just to uh like when when you back again when you're creating this program you need to know like okay who is your target market again you need to be more more uh, precise to that no precise to that and then like Yeah. know the audience itself let's say uh the person like okay so i need this man who are interested around this topic around yeah. uh mental health uh being an adventure together um and then talk about it with the person who have that criteria right, which right, you're right. looking for mm. and then asking them like ah okay if you know just bouncing ideas in the beginning yeah. <laughs> sorry just bouncing the ideas in the beginning and then uh And then ask 
ask them basically like is this something that you would like to have or not mm. or ask them what they would like more in sort of an event like yeah. that or something yeah so to more find my sort of target that could be interested in this and then to more precisely ask them what they really will be interested in or mm -hmm. maybe let's say like you already you already put a couple of agenda there right um like okay day one check in at the cabin welcome get climbing equipment orientation and prepare your back mm -hmm. uh when we're talking about the orientation there are a lot of type of activities as well right so let's say one of the other feedback that let's say when you're talking to this person you can also say well you know like what kind of activities actually that you like to do mm. as simple as that yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, okay you know just to elevate the uh the program itself um mm -hmm. yeah i guess i guess that's the only thing that i have in mind uh so far i mean the program itself it looks good um all the things that you've done on the website is already great i don't really understand uh about the marketing that much um about but i marketing? guess you yeah the marketing of the events how i would market um, it or or what do you mean yeah how yeah how how do you put on the website what's what needs to be there i don't know uh all that kind of stuff but but yeah uh it's 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 there uh, uh -huh. it's good already it's pretty how, clear on what I do. how would you market it like the events that you've done how did you market them mainly like just uh, mainly facebook yeah that's true yeah mm, i mean the way yeah, like again, yeah, mo mostly Facebook because that's my that's where my target market is, right? Mm -hmm. I guess uh, when it comes to marketing as well, like you need to know like where your target market is. Yeah. Ah, ah. Anyway, <laughs> everything looks good, man. But but that's just my 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 my. Uh, no, awesome! Message. I really appreciate uh your feedback on this actually uh mm. and you definitely shared something good uh for me to kind of look into more uh to more define my audience for this event better mm -hmm. um yeah that helps that helps a lot actually well glad if i could help <laughs> uh, let me I mean, the other event that i had mm -hmm. is sort of similar that i also think i have the same problem that i also have to more i mainly created these events that i was like oh i think i would like this event and i think that could be cool mm -hmm. but not really looking you know for people yeah more f more creating an event that people are more looking for so i have to do some more uh uh yeah search more for my audience or the events that I have more define better the audience to it uh, for both events actually. Mm. Uh, yeah. I guess knowing your knowing your target audience is very important uh, for you to. Uh, I mean, be, it's it's good that you're already creating this option, um, but define define it define your uh, target market just. Uh huh. Um, okay. And how does this event actually sound? Like, this is an event where I basically want to go three days also with mm -hmm. people uh, in the forest. And yeah, again, I think it's also... And it's sort of like a, uh, a camping wild. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and yeah, I think I'm actually running into the same problem like the other one. Mm. that i have to define my audience a bit better there okay mm. i think yeah, I uh, guess, from what you i guess shared, once you i guess once you already know the answer better you're pretty much more confident on creating the events and the program itself and it will like boosting up your mood so much mm. and it will makes you works better on creating the programs or the events yeah um, and I mean, in the end, you you feel like, a, you know, events or anything kind of like you refine it bit more and more 
uh, it's not like, because this was sometimes that I was a bit worried about, like, oh, I create it and it's going to be like, like that it, it's always going to be like that, but you can refine things, improve them. Mm-hmm. Um, cause I tried the other event that I just showed some years ago. Uh, and yeah, like one group showed up, but then many mm-hmm. other events that I held with that event, no one showed up. Mm. Uh, so yeah, I was a bit like, uh, oh, I suck at holding events, but it just had to be a little bit more refined, I guess, mm. um, with the information that you shared. Uh, so, yep. yeah, yeah, I guess, mm, yeah, the reason why I say that is very important because actually it is because it is actually important, you know, um when when you don't really curate the events better mm-hmm. to the target audience that you are targeting then of course you will not have a lot of people like coming into the event itself um, yeah makes sense like that's why at the end of the day uh it's about like curating the events better knowing your audience yeah. uh that's it, it sounds easy, but actually a lot, you know, when it's it comes true. to events. Because everyone's always like, oh, okay, yeah, just another event. But of course, there's a yeah. lot of things happening behind it. Like you need to do a research about the target market, the people, like who are you talking to? What do they like? What this person like? You know, that's why at Hubud, I always talk to people and then ask like, okay, what do you want? <laughs> mm, yeah, best way. But uh, maybe that was the thing that I thought it was a bit easier to hold an event than in reality it is actually, because mm. uh, yeah. Uh, but well, l- next year hopefully they will be a bit better. <laughs> yes, man. Hopefully, so then I I really miss being like go first travel. Of course, I would like to travel, but I really miss going to a concert or festival or events where I can be around can a lot of people. Yeah. And yeah, hopefully the world's getting better soon by next year. So then we can start having those activities again. It will, but it just takes time, you know. <laughs> getting there, getting there. Uh, so w- was there anything more or else that you wanted to talk about? Or do you feel, because I think we've been chatting for two One hours. and a half hours. Two hours and 30 minutes. Yes. About, yeah. Or do you feel like yeah. we, I don't know, covered quite enough of topics right now for this time? <laughs> I guess I guess it's, it's okay. Yeah. Uh, it's good, like, coming up from my side. Um, I... I, yeah, I guess it's pretty much good from my side. Like, how about you? Like, is it okay? Or do you have any other topic in mind? I shared all of them that I wanted to share. Uh, so, yeah, I'm good too. And uh, it was really awesome because I had you on my, like, list of people that I wanted to talk to on this podcast for a while now. So Thanks, it's man. really awesome, actually, to uh, to finally have done this with you. Yeah, so thanks. Well, hopefully, hopefully it's interesting enough to, you know, I don't know. Um, Surprisingly yeah. <laughs> enough, you know, because this podcast was also created for me to catch up with people around the world mm-hmm. that I know, like interesting people yeah. that I know. And it was a great opportunity like that to yeah connect with people again and mm. uh, also share, you know, interesting things with each other and then also share it out in the world for our others who might be interested yeah. too. And so far, I've been actually receiving quite a lot of positive comments from people Good. listening to past episodes. So okay. I'm pretty sure this one will also be a, a great listen for a lot of people. Well, hopefully, hopefully. I mean, um, it's always nice to catching up with friends. Um, I mean, you know, like when was the last time we talked? But um, I don't know. Well, last time that I was in Bali Long was, time. I think. I guess. In we January. never really like. Uh huh. So almost about a year ago now. Was it? Yeah, because the last time when you were here, I know the corona is already starting. Exactly. You're still around. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, it should be like around. I think January or February or something that I was still in Ubud. Uh Ah, yeah. And then Ubud, everything was closed. Yes. And then I think you were in Chengdu already. 
Oh, oh yeah, because you were. Oh yeah, I remember. I still remember that you are still around. Benedicta is still around. Edith is still yes. around. But they uh, left when I was still there, actually. Oh, really? Yes. Okay. Because they went uh, because of Corona back home. I was actually with mm. uh, Edith, supposed to go to Nusa Penida. Mm-hmm. And I was on the island of Nusa Penida, and then she was like, yeah, I'm going home. <laughs> and I was yeah. like, what the hell? <laughs> <laughs> so I was uh, alone on the island by myself. But oh had a my good time God. Anyway. Yes. <laughs> well, that's that's always good, hey, to have some time for yourself as well. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> like needed. <laughs> and what I said. Uh, what are you still doing tonight? Actually, I'm gonna catching up with a um, like one more work to do because uh-huh. right now we're um, at the moment we're thinking to create a uh, virtual retreat for our team member here. Um, All right, we we we've done that before earlier this year, um, and it went great. Uh, we already used this. Um, we already had a picture from our last virtual retreat, but this is my first time to create this virtual retreat myself. So I need to figuring out about like what kind of software that I can use to do this virtual meeting for everyone. So then mm. it can be more fun, uh, knowing that most of our team members are like developers as well, right? They like right. to play games. So maybe I need to find a software where it can be more playful i guess where everyone can feel like they're playing games i don't know if you ever heard about getter.town but i guess that's one of the software that i like that's the software that i will use to have this like it's it's kind of like a video chatting for remote teams and then you can actually create a venue um and then and then yeah you can actually like create an avatar of yourself and then you and your team member are there and then having a call there you can That's actually cool. doing a presentation as well there so i was like okay i guess this is interesting maybe it's something that the people love but i don't know um right now i would like to drafting the agenda and try to find the activities because um well the goal for this uh for this event is basically to uh gathering all the new team member that we have Mm. Uh, because we had a lot of like new team members coming in this past three months because we have a lot of project coming in. We need, we have more developers coming in as well to cool. our team now at the moment. We just want to bring everyone together and then having, you know, like bonding time and then sharing a couple of um, company information. And you're doing on, this on a freelance base. Right, you said um, I'm actually no, actually, I'm I'm doing it full time right now. Ah, yeah, okay, all right, yeah. So, so yeah, actually, like after freelance uh, experience, man, last year, he, I mean, it was great. Uh, um, you had all the time in your life, uh, but it was so uh, for me. I was always nervous at the end of the month because I don't know if I still have the gigs or not yes. and coming from the experience that I were uh, like from the experience before where I pretty much settle every month I know like okay next month I have my salary so I don't yeah. need to worry so much I don't really have to find the clients every time or every day or you know there's a whole hustle involved in being free yes and I don't think that's for me I would prefer to just have at least for now, I would yeah. prefer to just have like a full time where I put my like all of my energy into that. And yeah, then, right. You know, yeah. Rather than it or yeah, you have one. more energy on just focusing on doing the work than on actually stressing out about finding the clients. And yeah, yeah. So, yeah, yeah. it's not easy. <laughs> Yeah, that's why. De- yeah, that's why I decided to took this job in the beginning because I actually told them in the beginning they were asking like, hey, "Are you interested to just doing it like uh, part time?" And I was like, "Well, actually, I would prefer to do it full time." And then at the end they decided, "Okay, let's let's just having it here full time." Then awesome. so I was like, 
<laughs> okay, that's good. <laughs> that's what cash needs. And then uh, with the way we work at the moment, uh, knowing that it's pretty much remote, it's actually interesting as well. Like I can, I can kind of like relate with all the things that people that I met at Hubut talking about, like how remote work. Yeah works mm. and then um you know about uh loneliness mental health yep. it's, uh, it's it, it's there um so i kind of like relate with all that uh so much when everyone said like oh my god i feel so lonely the reason why i go to court in space because we w- i would like to meet people yep. so that's why right now i even you know ask my <laughs> As my uh, supervisor, if it's okay for me to subscribe to co-working because I Good I need it. I cannot I I cannot work at home by myself. It's, nah, it's too much it's after a while. Cash. Yeah, a good decision uh, to uh, yeah. yeah co-working places are amazing. Yeah. Well, Cash, um, I'm gonna leave you to uh, some more night work for you. <laughs> I know. And okay, I... I'm just. Gonna for another like one or two hours and then go to sleep <laughs> and i really appreciate uh that you wanted to take the time to do this and also just uh, to be able to catch up with you it was really awesome to talk to you again